Welcome to Monster Hunter Rise, I'm Alex, and let's talk about one of my absolute favorite things, ridiculously sized video game weaponry. There are 14 weapon types in Rise, which all play quite a bit differently from each other, so picking the right weapon to suit your personal playstyle is very important. If you're coming from previous entries like Generations Ultimate or World and want a brief summary of some of the changes the weapons have received, or you're starting brand new here with Rise and need to pinpoint which weapon suits you best, or maybe you're trying to get an uninitiated friend to join in the hunts with you and need something concise to send their way to try to convince them. Well, that is all exactly what this one video should be. I also have a video on advanced techniques for all 14 of these weapons that's just about finished as well, so consider sticking around on the channel because I have a lot more planned for Monster Hunter Rise. First off, a Monster Skull's worst fear, the Noggin Kraken Hammer. Dealing tremendous blunt damage if aimed correctly, the hammer is fairly straightforward but a oh so fun weapon to master. This hammer can be charged up while on the move to pre-prime up different attacks. This gives the hammer somewhat of a hit and run attack style since dodge rolling oncoming damage will often disrupt your charging attacks. This makes regular movement, correct spacing, and monster knowledge all the more important for a hammer user. Of course, that's all thrown out the window, however, if a monster is stunned, which they will be often if your hammer bro skills are on point. Also, the hammer's new silkbind attacks give some really potent aerial moves like the always satisfying spinning bludgeon and the huge downward slam impact crater. If you want a strong single hitting weapon with decent mobility and don't want to memorize a plethora of combo strings, the hammer definitely strikes all those boxes. Next, the near impossible to miss with wide sweeping longsword. The longsword is a build-up style weapon that becomes more powerful as you charge up its spirit gauge, which requires well-timed placement of certain attacks or precise counters. This weapon is an all-around monster slayer with huge reach on its horizontal and vertical attacks, along with great mobility. This is yet another weapon that extra benefits from knowing monsters' movesets since its numerous attack-absorbing counters only work properly if they get powered up by connecting with an oncoming hit. The Longsword's new Silkbind attacks give yet another, even more powerful way to counter, the Serene Pose, along with a distance-closing new plummeting attack, the Soaring Kick. If you want a beastly and fairly quick melee weapon, have the patience to charge it up to its full potential, and enjoy countering oncoming attacks, the Longsword will definitely do the trick. Next, the weapon you really don't want to be on the receiving end of, the Greatsword. The Greatsword is lumbering, intimidating, and challenging to wield, but will make you the coolest kid in this Jurassic Park if you can learn to harness its immense power. Charging up your big attacks at just the right moment will be absolutely vital, or you'll be embarrassingly swinging at nothing as a monster flanks around you. Prepare to sheath and draw this weapon frequently to help counter its plotting ground speed, but the Greatsword's new Silkbind attacks do greatly help its general mobility. The Power Sheath will quickly put your weapon away while evading, which will give you a temporary attack boost, and the Hunting Edge gives you a long leaping attack that can be comboed off of if the attack connects. Overall, if you're considering playing the Greatsword, be ready to do your monster homework, really knowing when the right time is to strike, making for a somewhat simple weapon, but one with a massive skill ceiling. Next up, the Stamina Devouring Bow. The bow is a mid-ranged weapon that can dodge around to charge up shots and use a variety of arrow coatings to inflict status ailments or just deal more damage. Being a bow user doesn't just mean you can safely sit super far back and snipe away at a monster, since its sweet spot range is well within the danger zone of most oncoming attacks, so think of it more like an arrow shotgun. The bow is really ideal for someone who wants to play a middle ground between the melee weapons and the bow guns. The bow gains a pretty useful new area of effect healing shot in Rise, along with its new Silkbind attacks. These are the Herculean Draw, which will temporarily power up your damage, and the Focus Shot, which allows you to evade with the Wire Bug, followed by quickly regenerating your stamina as you land. If you're one who doesn't do too well with stamina-based combat systems, maybe consider something else, but if you're highly skilled at carefully managing a resource gauge during battle, you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of the bow. Next, the pogo stick of death, the Insect Glaive. The Insect Glaive is a fairly complex weapon, requiring you to extract buffs off of certain sections of the monster using your Kinsect, the beetle thing on your arm, to improve your overall moveset. You will also be bounding about the skies as you wreak aerial havoc on your victims. The Insect Glaive gains new Silkbind attacks, like the Silkbind Vault, an aerial attack that has different finishers you can do out of it and can be activated in the air to stay up there longer. 
You also have Recall Kinsect, which will make you evade while calling back your Kinsect, which will scatter healing extracts as it returns. The Insect Glaive is very agile, hits hard with many multi-striking attacks, and plays quite a bit differently than most of the other more ground-based weapon types. If you don't mind having the upkeep of keeping your Kinsect buffs active to be most effective, and want to laugh at everyone else mostly staying on the ground, consider mastering the over-the-top Insect Glaive. Next is the impenetrable defensive beast named Lance. The Lance is a super beefcake tank with offensive power to boot, once you master its initially somewhat tricky movement. Absorbing massive oncoming attacks with its vibranium-like shield, poking monsters right in the eyeball, and haphazardly charging all over the field is just a normal evening as a Lance user. The Lance doesn't have a super complex combo game, however, using the correct reorienting strikes is what really sets the novices apart from the pros. Its new Silkbind attacks are the Twin Vine, which allows you to tether to a monster to come leaping at it from a long distance, and the Anchor Rage, which is a counter that provides a different power boost to your Lance depending on the type of attack it absorbs. If you're looking for a weapon that allows you to sit unhindered right up under a monster, utilizing minimal dodging, and want to harness its unique movement system, Lance will ultimately be your best friend. Next, the Nimble Artillery of the Light Bowgun. The Light Bowgun takes some future planning and using yourself as bait, almost like the Trapper class of the bunch, thanks to its explosive Wyvern Blast charges that can be lodged into the ground, or even better, planted right onto the monster's hide. The Light Bowgun encourages you to keep your distance since the majority of its different ammo types have a sweet spot decently far away from their target. The Light Bowgun's new Silkbind attacks are the Silkbind Glide, which is a quick evade with a follow-up attack, and the very satisfying Fanning Vault that pops you up into the air to get in some aerial shots, or even plant one of your Wyvern Blast charges directly onto a monster if timed correctly. Playing the Light Bowgun means you'll be a regular nuisance to the monster as you chip away at their HP with constant ranged damage with very little downtime. If you prefer to hang back a bit, like to set up nice little death traps, and want to play around with all the bowgun's different ammo types, the light bowgun will be definitely enjoyable to wield. Next up, the Swiss Army Knife of the Bunch, the Charge Blade, which combines a sword, shield, and two-handed axe all into one epic monster slaying tool. The Charge Blade focuses on building up power while in sword mode to funnel charged files into the heavy-hitting axe mode for even greater effect. This is a weapon that requires a little bit of research before being effective, since you definitely don't want to try to flail away with an overheated blade if you don't know what you're doing. New for the Charge Blade, it gains the Morphine Advanced Silkbind Attack, which allows you to evade while switching to Axe Mode, which has some follow-ups out of it, along with Counter Peak Performance, which can absorb an oncoming attack to charge up your files, which are the things used to power up some of the Charge Blade's best attacks. The Charge Blade is great for anyone who wants to have their monster-themed cake and eat it too, offering not only a wide variety of defensive options, but also devastating offensive capabilities as well. Next, the ultra-fast blur of a weapon, the Dual Blades. Dual Blade users are nimble, quick, and tend to spin around the battlefield like an unhinged saw blade. To get the most out of these, activating Demon Mode will greatly enhance the moveset of the Dual Blades, but rapidly saps your stamina gauge, making it a very precious resource for the wielder. The new Silkbind attacks for the Dual Blades are the Shrouded Vault, which propels you through the air which initiates a spinning attack if you absorb an oncoming hit during it, along with the Piercing Bind, which lodges an explosive blade into the target which will detonate with greater effect the more you strike it before it blows. If you want a weapon the furthest from the term methodical, and want to move around and attack very quickly, the dual blades will prove to be really satisfying for you, just be prepared to meticulously manage that stamina gauge. Next up, the Stat Boost Serenading Hunting Horn. The Hunting Horn is a versatile weapon that can buff yourself and teammates by playing a sequence of notes while attacking. Different attack types are what yield the various notes. Also, different hunting horns will have entirely different songs, requiring varying sequences of notes, making this perfect for someone wanting a weapon that will regularly shake up their combo flow. The new Silkbind attacks it gained are the Slide Beat, which sends you forward into a spinning attack while providing a status boost after it concludes, and then there's the Earthshaker, which is a short-range attack that sends a vibration through a monster to explode them from the inside. Pretty gnarly. Overall, the Hunting Horn is ideal for any hunter that wants to improve themselves and teammates with beneficial melodies, while also piling on the doot doot damage while doing so. Next, it slices, it dices, it blocks, and can quickly access items, the versatile Sword and Shield. 
The Sword and Shield is pretty quick and easy to learn, but does have a decently high skill ceiling that will really set newcomers apart from the pros. If you've tried some of the other weapons and find that it actively bothers you that you have to put your weapon away every time you want to munch on an item, you might want to consider the Sword and Shield since it comes with magic pockets that let you use items with your weapon drawn. The new Silkbind attacks for the Sword and Shield add the Falling Shadow, which is a leaping attack that can launch you up for further attacks if it connects, and the Windmill, which is a flailing attack in front of you that can nullify a hit during its startup. If you're seeking a weapon type that feels the most familiar to other third-person action RPGs out there and want to trim the downtime to just focus on raw combat, the Sword and Shield is a great all-around choice. Next up, bringing a machine gun to a dinosaur fight, the Heavy Bowgun. The Heavy Bowgun is the slower-moving, stronger-hitting counterpart to the Light Bowgun, allowing for you to load it up with different ammo types to inflict status ailments or deal damage in different ways. The Heavy Bowgun has something almost akin to an ultimate ability, which is its accumulating special ammo that allows you to go fully automatic until you expend the payload. The Heavy Bowgun gains the new Silkbind attacks, the Counter Shot, which lets you absorb a hit to fire off a devastating Counter Blast, and the free Silkbind Glide, which allows you to quickly evade, followed up with a melee strike or a fast weapon sheath. The Heavy Bowgun is the champion of the backline, doing best when it can lay down barrages unhindered, since its slower movement and dodging can be somewhat lacking when in close range of your target. If you prefer firing bullets instead of swinging away with a melee weapon, the Heavy Bowgun will definitely satisfy your urge to do so. Next, is it a sword? Is it an axe? Yes, it's the Switch Axe. The Switch Axe gives you access to two hard-hitting weapons all in one. The Axe mode is more agile and has really great reach, and the Sword mode is slower moving but has some incredibly strong strikes which can further power up the sword with repeat use. The Switch Axe can link combos from one mode to the other seamlessly, making for a potent offensive weapon type. The Switch Axe's new Silkbind attacks are the Switch Charger, which allows you to quickly evade while restocking and buffing your Switch Gauge, and the Invincible Gambit, which is a forward spin attack that is immune to flinching and knockback during it. Overall, if you're looking to be a strong frontline damage dealer that is not the quickest nor the slowest of the bunch, and like to regularly change up your combo game by alternating weapons, the Switch Axe will be perfect for that power-hungry type of playstyle. Last but definitely not least, we have the more explosive lance, the Gun Lance. The Gun Lance is void of some of the movement and defensive options of the standard lance, but gains a wide arsenal of powerful short-range blast attacks. The Gun Lance feels right at home right up under a monster, absorbing its oncoming attacks and retaliating, with little need to waste all that time dodging around. The Gun Lance's new Silkbind attacks are the Hail Cutter, which is a rising strike and finishing slam, which reduces the cooldown of Wyvern Fire, one of your strongest gun attacks. Then it has the Guard Edge, which is a guard that can absorb an attack to somewhat regenerate your weapon's sharpness, which can be followed up with subsequent attacks. If you're looking for a weapon type that defends like a tank and attacks like that other kind of tank, a Gun Lance user will be an absolute blast to play as. And that's finally it, all 14 of the weapon types available in Monster Hunter Rise. Even though each weapon has different pros and cons, they end up being all perfectly viable overall, so there's no real wrong choice. However, some will vibe better with your own specific gaming playstyle better than others. I'm hoping this helped you pin down which one you're going to pick, and if it did, let me know which one gets your vote. I have even more useful Monster Hunter Rise content coming, so if you enjoyed this video and want some even more in-depth stuff very soon, stick around on Boomstick Gaming. As always, this has been Alex, thanks for giving this a watch, and good luck out there with your big game hunting.